Hi everybody, it's Jennifer McCreef. What is it today? May 28th, 2021? Something like that. Just watched The Ultimate Warrior, a Dark Side. And I watched the A&E bio as well this week. And... I just don't like the way people keep crapping on this guy because they just didn't like him. Pro wrestling is a business. It's a private business. It's not government. It's not about who's nicest or all that. It's about making money. Why do people create private businesses? To make money. This guy was money. And unfortunately, he's taken the heat because his 1990 world title reign didn't live up to expectations. Well, whose fault was that? The Booker's. It was Vince McMahon. He was so focused on trying to build Hulk Hogan 2.0 that he forgot to focus on making the Ultimate Warrior a better Ultimate Warrior. Vince would make this same mistake three years later in 1993 when he tried to make Lex Luger Hulk Hogan 2.0 instead of making Lex Luger a better Lex Luger. Hindsight's 2020, I know, but let's go back. Let's take a look. Let's get into our time machine and go back to April 1st, 1990, Toronto Skydome, 67,000, WrestleMania, only one prior WrestleMania had been held in a stadium, all the others had been in arenas, Hogan Andre WrestleMania 3 will and always be the biggest attraction in wrestling history. Was it the greatest match? Not really. Andre could barely move. But the storyline was built up over time. And you as the fan couldn't predict what was going to happen. Let's look at the other WrestleManias, specifically the main events. WrestleMania 1, you had Hogan and Mr. T against Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff. A good tag match that ended with interference from Bob Orton and Jimmy Snuka. Hogan pinning Orndorff. Yeah, it was good, but hardly the greatest match of all time. WrestleMania 2, you had Hogan against King Kong Bundy in a steel cage. Nobody even remembers that match. People remember William the Refrigerator Perry in a battle royal with Andre the Giant. WrestleMania 3, Savage vs. Steamboat was perhaps the match of the night. It won match of the year. 87, perhaps the best year for pro wrestling ever. WWF and NWA were on fire. Andre puts over Hogan. Hogan continues and dominates. Let's backtrack a bit. Toronto was always a strong NWA territory until 84, when Vince came in and convinced Frank Tunney to, get, to leave the NWA and to make Maple Leaf Gardens the home of WWF. 84, 85, 86, 87. Anywhere from 6 to 12 shows a year at Maple Leaf Gardens. If Hulk Hogan was wrestling, that building was full. 18,000 fans. If Hulk Hogan was not wrestling, 6 to 7,000 fans. Didn't matter who else. If your Hogan was your A show. If, if your B show came into town, it did not sell. My first house show was October 87. No Hogan, no sellout. 5,000 people were there to see Rick Rude and Paul Orndorff fight with Andre the Giant at ringside. The number two match was superstar Billy Graham and Butch Reed. Nice try, no Hogan. Terrible showing. A month later, Hogan's in. Hogan DiBiase on top, 18,000 sellout. Now let's fast forward a little bit. February 5th, 1988. Hogan loses his title, his one and only pinfall loss in four years, on television to Andre the Giant. But it wasn't a clean finish. We all know what happened. Hogan lifted his shoulder and Earl Hebner still counted to three. Simultaneously, right there and then, Hulkamania was dead. It didn't matter what happened next. It would never be the same, at least in Toronto. We all know what happened. They had a tournament at WrestleMania 4. 
The big Hogan Andre 3 rematch was a complete dud. Ended in a double count out or a double disqualification. The tournament had so much potential for some really good matchups, but they wouldn't book it. They could have had Savage Steamboat rematch in the second round, but no. They had Steamboat loose in the first round. So instead we got Savage winning the title in four relatively quick matches. We had a mediocre show. Your Intercontinental title was a disqualification, honky tonk and beefcake. Demolition and Strike Force for the tag belts. Everybody knew Demolition was going to win. So, WrestleMania 4. I mean, Savage and DiBiase gave you a pretty good final match, but by then, they were just both out of gas. WrestleMania 5, okay. So, anyways, Hogan takes some time off to film the movie. Savage is your champ, and guess what? Savage does not draw. Savage tours around. Savage and DiBiase on top at the house shows. They played Madison Square Garden. They came to Toronto. They did not sell out. Nice try. So then they brought Hogan back for SummerSlam, and he had the big match with, with Zeus and all that. Not no, that was the next year. Anyways, Savage was never really the true number one guy because Hogan was always floating around. Hogan would show up. Hogan would co-headline stuff. SummerSlam, it wasn't Savage on top. It was Hogan and Savage versus Andre and DiBiase. Survivor Series, it was Hogan and Savage as a team. Royal Rumble, Hogan and Savage would fight. Um, there were house shows. Hogan was coming off the house show loop. That's why he dropped the belt. Savage couldn't draw. Um, after SummerSlam, they pivoted to uh, Savage and Bad News. That didn't draw either. Bad News Brown, great wrestler, great heel, but not a draw. February 3rd, 89, the Mega Powers split up. Once again, on the main event, the big TV show. Now Savage's heel. Coming into WrestleMania 5. And yeah, it was, it was a great program, a great storyline, a great feud. Hogan and Savage had worked before in 85 and 86. But guess what they did leading up to WrestleMania 5? Savage still had a few matches with Bad News. But Savage was now heel. They didn't want half heel versus heel. And the few times they did, Bad News got cheered. So they brought in the Intercontinental Champion, the Ultimate Warrior. WrestleMania 6 was not the first time the World Champ and the Intercontinental Champ headlined. Intercontinental Champ Warrior and World Champ Savage headlined house shows. I don't think they were title for title matches. Some of them might have been, but they wrestled. February and March, 89. As they say, six days a week, twice on Sunday. And of course, they all ended in disqualifications. Did those sell out? I don't know. Probably not. So anyways, WrestleMania 5, Hogan Savage, good main event, but we all knew Hogan was going to win. There was no intrigue or sus suspense there. We knew exactly what was going to happen. Hogan was going to beat Savage, and he did. And of course, Savage then picks up Sherry Martell is his manager. Hogan and Savage keep feuding. Zeus comes in off no holds barred. But guess what? 89 house show loop with Hogan on top for the first time in ever. Hogan was not selling out house shows. Zeus was not a, a main eventer and he, he didn't go on the house show loop. But Hogan Savage with the rematch, those did not always sell out. And guess what? There were no other real good heels for Hogan to work with in 89. Saturday night's main event, he worked Honky Tonk Man, who had been Intercontinental Champion in the past, but had transitioned into a tag wrestler. Hogan fought King Haku. Um, who else did he fight 89? He reignited his feud with DiBiase, but nobody really took those matches seriously. Then they warmed up the genius, and he got a, a count out win over Hogan. They were pushing Kurt Hennig, and meanwhile, the Ultimate Warrior, like Hogan, had only ever been pinned once, and it was a controversial finish, so it didn't really count. Bobby Heenan pulled his ankle, and Rick Rude got a pin over the Warrior, but they followed that up by having Warrior win back over Rude. So Warrior, a very strong two-time Intercontinental Champion. Hogan comes in as your 
two-time WWF champion. Both of them were seemingly on a collision course. Survivor Series 89 Warriors match actually closed the show. Warrior Andre was your main event feud where Hogan versus Zeus and DiBiase was lower in the card. But yeah, Royal Rumble 90. What's the one thing you remember about that? Hogan and Warrior in the ring for a couple of minutes. You don't remember that Hogan won the Royal Rumble. You don't remember that it was Mr. Perfect who was the runner-up. You remember Hogan Warrior meeting in the ring at the Royal Rumble. So that, that set it up. Okay, face versus face. We've never done this before. But like I said, they ran out of heels. They were even beating up the same heels. Hogan and Warrior both were beating up Dino Bravo. They were beating up Rick Rude. They were beating up this newcomer Earthquake who wasn't quite ready for the main event. And all your other really good heels, you'd turn face. Jake Roberts was face. Beefcake was face. Big Boss Man turned face. All these great workers that... I mean, Hogan worked with all those guys, except for Snake. They, had, they wouldn't let Snake work with Hogan because the fans were cheering Snake and booing Hogan. So yeah, WrestleMania 6, 22 minutes, main event. It's not going to be a Meltzer five-star classic. It's not Flair and Steamboat. But Hogan and Warrior, for two big muscle heads, they gave you a pretty darn good main event, back and forth. There was some wrestling in there. Hogan can wrestle. He's not just all about punches and kicks. Vince just didn't want him wrestling. He wanted him to do the power stuff. Great show. Big surprise. Hogan cleanly pinned. Oh my goodness, we never thought we'd see this. Must be a fluke. The very next TV... Jack Tunney comes on and says there will not be a rematch. There's your first mistake right there. A rematch would have been huge. You come back. Hogan's leaving. We know that. He's going off to do another movie. I can't remember what the second one was, but he's going to be off the house show tours, so you need the belt off him. But they could have kept this thing going. Hogan Warrior. How about a rematch at SummerSlam? So anyways, Hogan gets squashed by the Earthquake on the Brother Love Show and is away for a couple months. So who do they give the Warrior? They give him Rick Root. Great worker. He beat the Warrior once before. He might do it again. No, he won't. We know. There's no way in hell Rick Root is ever going to pin the Warrior for the world title. Nobody wanted to see that match again. We'd seen it twice. WrestleMania 5, SummerSlam... 89, we'd seen it on the house shows. We did not want to see it again. We did not need to see it again. But that's all they felt they could do. Mr. Perfect had just been beaten by Brutus Beefcake at WrestleMania 6. His supposed first clean pinfall loss, which is not true because he lost on the house shows to both Hogan and Warrior. But your number three guy, Hennig, had just been buried by Beefcake. And Warrior winning the world title, you're going to take the Intercontinental off him and have a tournament. Put that on Perfect, okay. Maybe Warrior and Perfect can work again, but for now that's off the, off the shelf. Who else did you have? Well, you already buried Dino Bravo with the Warrior. Bad News and Piper had a, 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 a double count out. That feud was supposed to continue, but for whatever reasons it didn't. They would end up putting Jake with Bad News. I think if you had turned Jake heel, or Jake could have worked Warrior face versus face. How about turning the Warrior heel? Let the fans decide. We're gonna book. We're gonna book Jake with a Warrior. If anyone could get a good match out of the Warrior, it would have been Jake. And as we would learn, that was gonna be the plan a year later in '91 before the Warrior ended up getting fired. But Jake had just finished a, a lengthy program with DiBiase. DiBiase was going to move on to the boss man. So Jake needed something to do. They ended up giving him uh, bad news. Earthquake had squashed Hercules. He would move on to Saturday night's main event to squash El Billy Jim. Then he would put Hogan out of commission. But maybe Earthquake and Warrior would have drawn. I'm just thinking back to the house shows, 1990 in Toronto. I didn't even go till the fall. 
I think it was Warrior and Rude over the summer, and it was a disqualification. Then they would add the Road Warriors, and this proved to be terrible booking, not just for the Ultimate Warrior, but the Dream Tag match of the time would be Axe and Smash versus Hawk and Animal. Instead, we got Hawk, Animal, and Ultimate Warrior against Crush, Axe, and Smash. Six men. Nobody wanted to see it. It was a terrible match, even in Survivor Series elimination style. It sucked. I was there. September 1990, Maple Leaf Gardens, main event. Survivor Series elimination. Ultimate Warrior, Hawk and Animal versus Axe, Smash, Crush. It was a clean sweep. Eight minutes in, Axe had been pinned, Crush had been disqualified, and Smash had been pinned. Terrible match, terrible main event. The place was half empty. Nobody wanted to see that. So then they throw Haku at the Warrior on the main event, Saturday night's main event. They go over to Japan and he works a match with DiBiase, but that's just a one-off. Savage was working Dusty Rhodes. That was pretty cool, actually. The, the first ever mixed tag, bringing back Elizabeth, WrestleMania 6. People say, what was the undercard? What was the number two match on that show? I think it was the Savage uh, Dusty match with uh, Sherry and Sapphire. You could argue Beefcake against Perfect was a huge match. Demolition versus Andre and Haku. But yeah, Savage could have... Ch Savage was a heel. He'd worked with Warrior before. Savage had been former world champ. Savage would have been a more credible opponent than Rude. They keep coming back to Rude not being the right guy. SummerSlam. Instead of having Warrior as your clear number one guy main eventing, it's co-main event. It's like they did with CM Punk. We'll put the belt on you, but you're in the co-main event. You're not the real main event. Hogan Earthquake's our main event. Warrior and Rude is our co-main event. And guess what? Again, after Hogan lost the belt in 88, he was no longer a draw at the house shows. They tried to bring him back in the fall, and they, they split it up. Warrior and Road Warriors and Demolition would work one tour. Hogan and Earthquake would work another tour. I remember in 90, I saw the six man with the Warrior in uh, September. Then November, it was Hogan against Earthquake. No belts, just a match. Ended in a, in a count out. So they came back again on Boxing Day. Hogan, Earthquake, Stretcher match. Again, n not even half sold out. Probably 5,000 people. So Warrior in a six man did not draw. Hogan without the belt didn't draw. Warrior Rue didn't draw. I'm trying to remember. I don't think Warrior even came back to Toronto. I think he only had one title match in Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens during his nine month run. So then they decide to pivot to Sergeant Slaughter. They have Slaughter take the belt off Warrior because Savage interferes which leads to the belt going back on Hogan. Hogan and Slaughter on top at WrestleMania. Savage and Warrior would work underneath a good program. I forgot the Survivor Series, 1990. Again, Warrior was champ. He had a Survivor Series match. Hogan had a Survivor Series match. They both won their matches. And then they put them together in a grand finale match of survival. Hogan, Warrior, and Tito Santana against five heels. Tito got eliminated. Hogan and Warrior take out the five heels. Once again, you've got Hogan side by side with the Warrior. So Warrior was never really given that pedestal as the number one guy. Yeah, I beat Hogan, but Hogan's standing beside me. He's posing with me instead of fighting on the match under me. And there was no rematch. No chance for him to prove that it wasn't a fluke. I don't know. Um, by the way, Hogan won the belt at WrestleMania 7. Warrior ended Randy Savage's career, supposedly, in a retirement match. Hogan versus Slaughter would go on to headline house shows in 91, and they would not draw. What did Warrior do that? I can't even remember. Somehow Warrior and Hogan uh, kept together as a team and feuded with Slaughter and his henchmen until Survivor or SummerSlam when Warrior and Hogan took on Slaughter and uh, the Iron Sheik 
and General Adon, and then they were going to have Warrior fight the Snake, but it, then Warrior got fired, and that was it. I don't know. I just think if the Warrior had been better booked, he could have drawn and been a better champion to the point where you could have kept him as champion. Hogan finished his movie. He wanted to come back. Are you going to put Hogan back on top again? A transition. Hogan never got. We never saw the rematch with the Warrior. I don't. The WCW stuff doesn't count. Years later, we were always left hanging. Then again, in '92, Warrior gets fired, but they bring him back a year later. Warrior saves Hogan from a beating at WrestleMania eight. Instead of challenging Hogan, they both go in separate directions. Vince brings in Ric Flair. He books Hogan Flair, but pulls the plug on it. They never end up having that match on pay-per-view. Savage Flair. Then it goes Warrior Savage. We never... And then, then Hogan... What did Hogan do in 92? He came... He, he's just inconsistent booking. The Undertaker was in there for a title run. I mean, then Warrior and Undertaker feuded. It was, which was not good. Warrior, Undertaker was new to the business, and that his original character just wasn't really going to wrestle. Warrior needed someone who could wrestle. You can't just have him in there with another big muscle head, unless it was Hogan. And uh, yeah, so stop crapping on the guy. Um, he did the best he could with the booking he was given. He was cr the only, other than Hogan, the only other credible guy. That's the other thing. 89 Warrior was on the B House shows beating Andre. Nobody else beat Andre. After Andre turned heel and lost to Hogan, he headlined house shows, the B shows. They came through Toronto. Andre worked with Jim Duggan. He worked with John Studd. He worked with Hillbilly Jim. Worked with Jake Roberts, and he worked with the Ultimate Warrior. Andre squashed everybody except the Warrior. Warrior would always beat Andre. And all those didn't—they didn't sell out either. But uh, yeah, big mistake. And he do it again with Luger. Vince McMahon, I'm talking about. Try to turn Luger into Hogan instead of focusing on Luger being a good Luger. Maybe we'll do a Luger video next. Yeah, that's, there it is. Why didn't the Warrior work as world champion? Bad booking.